entrepreneur what does a cloud engineer do or we could say what is your day-to-day as a cloud engineer mm-hmm. and what were some misconceptions that you had maybe about working in the cloud before you started uh, this position uh, you can answer either one of those uh, either way you feel like it and mm-hmm. we can go from there uh, so for the most part, it's just like, hey, we have these old applications. They're in this old data center. We want to move them into the cloud. So you guys kind of need to refactor the code so that it's able to run in these new data centers. And then also you need to know how to keep maintaining this um, these systems in the cloud. And my job has a private cloud, so I don't get to use AWS and all these other ones, they built their own. So it's kind of just like constantly deploying applications into the cloud, something breaks, you look into the log, see what's going on, stop it, redeploy something else, or just keep going. There's always updates. There's always just different stuff that needs to be fixed and refractored and um, that could break the code or, um, and especially because I'm in the finance tech industry, it's really important that you keep stuff maintained and making sure the data is, is low balancing to the different data centers correctly um, because these is people's real information, financial information, and just making sure the code does what it's supposed to. So the day-to-day in my life is mostly doing hey, code refactoring, listen. helping to keep things maintained and smooth and doing up. <laughs> So yeah, that's all. Just constant refractoring because they already made the code. I just start. I'm just um, maintaining it. Got you. And I was gonna say that uh, you should definitely do a day in a life video. Mm-hmm. I'm a little scared because like the security at my job and stuff. And oh, so like, you got to be on site? Yeah. Are, y- are y'all hybrid or is every day on site? We're hybrid now. Okay. And so, so I, I don't hybrid... even know what to talk about because of the stuff that I'm I'm dealing with people's like bank account stuff. So it's like I don't really even know how to explain like, hey, I'm doing this other than recording myself on a computer. Yeah, uh, just to briefly talk about that without you owe them getting yourself in trouble on a video. You can just keep it very vague. Uh, more so like uh, my video, what I did was I was just being general on what I was actually doing, but not getting specific on who the person was or what did they do. And uh, I just had my screens blurred out. And uh, and then at the end, I talked. Some people like to talk through theirs. I mean, or you can also, you don't even got to get that. Uh, get even like that, you could also just do a, a day in the life like TikTok video. So I don't know. But I, it's pretty like, it's, it's pretty cool because everybody, one of the ways that I, in my ebook, I tell people to, how to figure out what they want to do is research on YouTube a day in the life. So, and somebody seeing somebody look like you being a cloud engineer in their day in the life, they say, Oh, thank you for this video. I've been looking for Like I, like my videos, almost what, maybe almost two years old now. Mm-hmm. And, um, people watch it like every day and somebody's come on and like, thank you for, you know, doing this and, and show me kind of what this day to day was or doing that. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, but, the next thing we'll go into is that uh, I remember in one of your videos, I think you might have been doing some practice questions from the cloud practitioner test, mm-hmm. but I don't want to put you on a spot like that. We'll do it like this. We'll say if somebody wanted to be a cloud engineer, what would be some skills that they should learn in order to be successful at their job? Um, so if you wanted to be a cloud engineer, I would say learning how the infrastructure of things work. Like if you have code, learning what the importance of a data center is and learning like about load balancing and how you have to move the traffic of the, the application to different parts and, um, learning what it what it takes to have an efficient and scalable application and even playing around and if you know you like azure and you you're researching a company and or you you're applying for a job and you know that it's a cloud in that type of area learning how that stuff works even though granted you might when you actually get into it because of like security restrictions and stuff the stuff that you do in a sandbox you probably would not do all of have access to do all of that stuff in one sitting. So 
um, just learning how it works, the background of it, but you'll learn more in detail how your team kind of uses it. Because I remember I was working for a different company and we were using AWS and um, that was after I had got my certification. So I just thought, oh, these companies are just openly using it. They do whatever. If they want to put up EC2, they do this and do that. But when I got to my job, we had to go through all these different teams. If we wanted an EC2 instance, another team had to set up the EC2 instance, put their security softwares on it, set up the server. Then they would give it to us and we had to get all this <laughs> we had to get all this access for different things and people would be on vacation they would just be waiting and they was bringing in aws um consultants to come in and help us build up the infrastructure so it just wasn't a free for all like oh well i know how to do this on my own i got these certifications when you actually go to the job there's there's a lot of limitations and they center it it's not centered to one team all these different teams come together to just have one application running right and i think what some people don't know about the cloud stuff is like so i i used to pretty much be the lead of, of our sock in my old company they didn't know that we was getting all the logs so every time somebody sold up an ec2 instance or a certain type of instance or s3 bucket was made public or they didn't put the block permission on it or they didn't delete it or they just was uh moving like we trying to make sure they weren't exfiltrating data and it was like probably what 30 gigs more than they normally do like five gigs or whatever all the different types so we got the logs for that so a lot of times we was looking in okay boom this don't match up let's see what this dude doing oh this is the first time somebody had, uh approached me about it so sometimes people ain't used to you even policing them on like hey are you you doing some work related like what is you doing yeah you know the cc they manager in and um and get them to answer but um that was pretty cool like look at you like I definitely know that you taking them tests and doing it day to day is sticking. And that's one of the biggest, the biggest things too, as well, that I'm, I'm all for, uh, granted, everybody can't do it, but I don't like people to just get certs and not to get a chance to really use the knowledge they learn because what happens is you lose it. It's similar to like going through stuff and that we do in college is that we study for all these courses and classes, but then we learn it for that semester. Then the next semester, we don't remember none yeah. of it. Yeah. Because it's just information. It's not stuff they're, they're making practical for us. We're not using it on a, a daily basis. So and I just that's why I always tell people. Kind of with the AWS right now, since I'm on it, this is my job and I'm using a completely different cloud. The little detailed parts of AWS is kind of slipping me now because I'm not constantly doing it because I'm tired after work. I don't really want to look at AWS while I just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely. And like. I'm just the biggest person, like just learning skills. Don't really worry about, you know, the search too much. Just keep on practicing that every day. So it stick with you mm -hmm. because in the interview, most of the time, I'm not going to really care about your search. I'm just going to ask you, do you know how to do the stuff that's on the job right. or you can explain it to me. So that's, that's pretty much, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Uh, and you, you gave that examples of pretty much of how, you know, he thought it might be a free for all. I'm like, oh, no, nah, it's way more restricted. And that's because of also the, what you're in. Like for me, same thing. Like it's different for me being in FinTech as well. Like, you know, certain restrictions they got far as applications, even on your phone or how they want you to access information. Yeah, I'm not used to. I'm used to having my work outlook and teams. I'm used to having all this stuff on my phone. It's currently... You know, on there. Uh, granted, we're supposed to be hybrid, but you know, uh, well, I got to get my second shot Saturday or Sunday, and then I got to get the booster later on. So I can't go in the office until I'm actually fully shot up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just use that word. <laughs> so that's a. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's definitely a lot of. You know, it's interesting. One of my friends, he like all of us. It's crazy. I wanted to. The reason, one of the reasons I left my last company is because I kind of wanted to try. Fintech out, of course they get paid well, but I just wanted to see what it has to offer and the differences and just so I could well round my skill set out. Mm -hmm. But uh he was like, Man, uh I give you I forgot how, what how many months he said he gave me to actually do fintech because you know, he didn't he didn't do fintech super long. I think I'm on month I made three months now. Oh wow. Uh, January. Yeah. 
December, January, February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So three months. And um, so we just gonna see how it's going so far. The culture's well and